Welcome biologists and in this session we're going to be having a look at chi-squared again, this time looking at an example of a dihybrid cross. In the first video on chi-squared we looked at a monohybrid cross. So here's our question if you want to pause it and have a go. It's a very good idea to lay it out in a table which I will put on very shortly for you. But in this particular example, we are looking at two genes, one which codes for either being dark or albino, and the other one which codes for either being short or long. And it gives a nine to three to three to one ratio. So I advise you to use a table like this if you want to pause it and have a go at giving this a whirl. However, I'll go through the answers now. So here you can see I've listed down what we observed in this genetic cross. So these are the actual numbers of offspring that were either dark and short, dark and long, etc., etc. Now to help me with this, I've also put down the side, the ratio of nine to three to three to one to help me work out what's going on. Because the first thing I have to do is work out the expected. So what I need to do, first of all, is count up the number of observed individuals that I had, which is 324. Now, in order to work out how many of each expected value I have, first thing I need to do is add up these numbers here. So the 93 to 3 to 1, if I add all them up, it adds up to 16. Now, I need to find 1 16th of 324 um, and then times that by 9 to get what I would expect for my dark, short individuals. So that's what I've done there. I then do the same but times it by three to get my number of individuals I'd expect for my dark long. And again, same for my albino short. But for my albino long, because this is the ratio of one I'm expecting, I just times it by one. In the next column, I do my observed, which is here, take the expected value and then do that for each one. So I will have some negatives here. However, when you square your observed, take expected, if it, for any negatives here, a negative times a negative will turn into a positive. So that's why I have positive values here. I then do my observed, take expected squared, which is here, and divide that by the expected value, which is in this column. So this is the number I get for the observed, take expected squared over expected. And the very last thing I need to do, chi-squared, is then take the sum of these. Now, don't forget, your formula for chi-squared is provided in your exam. All you need to do is know how to use it. So I highly advise you lay them out in a table like this so the examiner can see that you know what you're talking about. Also, if you do go wrong somewhere, you can pick up marks for your working out. So now I know what my chi-squared value is. I need to look this up in a table of probability. Um, and in order to do that, I need to know the number of degrees of freedom that I'm looking at, which is the number of categories or phenotypes take away one, which in this case is three phenol, sorry, four, take, four phenotypes take away one is three. Now, I'm looking it up in the table of probability. And if my value lies to the left hand side of my 5% value, which is here, then there is no significant difference between what I've observed and what I've expected. And my null hypothesis is accepted. If my value of chi-squared lies to this side of the 5% value, then there is a significance between what I've observed and what I've expected. The null hypothesis is rejected. Now, really important here in your conclusions, you always get marks for these four points. So it is well worth making sure that you've got all these four points in there when you make conclusions. So here's my probability table. There's my degrees of freedom three. So I'm looking at that line there. And I'm looking at at my probability level of 5% or 0.05, and this is my critical value, okay? So the first thing I need to do is state that my critical value of 0.49924 is less than the critical value of 7.82. Therefore, there is no significant difference between what I've observed and expected, and I accept the null hypothesis because my value of 4.9924 lies to this side. It lies to the left-hand side of my value, of my critical value. And I also get marks here for saying that therefore P is less than 5%. There we are. So there we have chi-squared. We've looked at a monohybrid cross in part one and a dihybrid cross in part two. Guys, good luck with your exams and please remember when doing chi-squared to make sure you include those four points